Welcome to Tell Me a Ghost Story, a late night call in podcast where we delve into the world of the supernatural and explore the eerie and unexplained. I'm your host, Michelle Newman. This podcast features true stories from our callers that will send shivers down your spine and leave you questioning the existence of the afterlife. So grab a cozy blanket. Turn down the lights. Hey, Michelle, this is Jacob. I got one for you. So I worked on a show up in uh, Denver, Colorado, I believe. And it was a uh, an old historic mansion. And um, uh, typically for the show, we have a host that come in and do a meet and greet with, uh, with the owners and see what kind of activities they have in the area. And then we would go, once they're done, we would come in, uh, the crew would come in and they set up all the cameras in the designated spots that they're going to be um, focusing on. And so they'll do the night investigation, see if they capture anything, and then present the reveal. Once they're done, we come in and we take everything apart. And so they did the investigation. We had to come in, take everything out. And there's like a couple levels to this location. And while my team was on the first floor taking everything apart, I decided to go up to the third floor by myself and see if I can get ahead of things. And once I got up there, there was a big room in front of me, uh, another room to the right of me, and like a small little office to the left of me. So I decided to go in the right, uh, to the room to the right. And as I go in to take away the camera that we had set up, behind me there is a door that I believe led to either a closet or a shaft or something, but it was crept open and it was dark and I couldn't see inside, but I noticed it. While I take away the camera, we had set up a a cable, put some paper tape on to keep it in place. And so I decided to pull on the cable um, to detach it. And so when you do that, it makes a noise. It goes shh, right? And so while I did that, a delayed echo occurred right behind me that really made me jump and just ended up staring at it. So I pulled it up and goes, and about a second later, behind me, freaked me out. I stayed there for a second, wait to see if it was my team coming up the stairs and nothing. Then I pull up on the cable again, just staring at the door and it goes, and comes right out of that closet door. Freaked me out. And I was like, nope, 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 nope. Put the cable back down and walked out that room. As I'm kind of like running down the stairs, my team was coming up and I completely played it off. And so I'm like, hey guys, I was uh, just uh, striking everything upstairs. Turned around and went at the opposite room and just took everything. Out of all the years that I've done ghost hunting shows, by far, that one was the one that impacted me the most. Thank you, Jacob, for your story. Who knew a ghost mimicking the sound of pulling tape would give me the chills. Next message. Hey, it's Dave in Sioux Falls again. Uh, almost 20 years ago, this started. Uh, one summer day when I didn't have work, uh, my father had my nephew and he wanted to do a day trip up to New Paul's, New York, to hit what's called uh, the Huguenot Homes, the historic site. And uh, we're in a house, I think it's called the Beaver House, very wooden, very early 19th century wooden house. And we're looking at these three paintings of a mother, father, and daughter. And there's only like seven of us, you know, in the total tour with the guide. And I'm in the back row. There's only like two rows, whatever, three rows of people listening to him talk about the house. And he, he glanced, well, glosses over a story I'd hear later. But uh, I just, I, loud and clear, I heard from behind me. He might there's something behind me but a wall. Get the blank out, get the blank out. So I knew they were a little scared, and I kind of inched towards the door. And we get outside. We're walking to the next stop. And I say to the tour guide, are there any ghost stories attached to these houses? He's like, oh, yeah. There's lots of them. In fact, one of our tour guides won't go in the next house. Oh. So later I did hear the story on another tour. Um, those two, the three, the three paintings had been kept separately because the parents' paintings were done. Um, very much the parents were in the room. But the daughter had actually passed away of, like, I don't know if it was consumption or something. 
couple days before the painting was done, but they propped her up and did a painting of this poor girl. And on the back, the artist signed it with, um, I did my best. And they said that for years, um, they, they tried to hang the girl's painting upstairs because it was so disconcerting and just have the parents downstairs. But they'd come in, they'd find the painting had basically jumped off the nail, landed on the floor, trying to say, hey, I don't want to hang here. So finally they hung her out downstairs with her parents and they, they would just refer to the painting as her. And she never fell off again. So I thought that was kind of creepy because I think that was the room where I had her get out. Thank you, David, from Sioux Falls, for another great story. I can just imagine the words, I tried my best, echoing through the halls of that house. That's all we have this week, folks. Do you have a ghost story? Call 701-484-2666. That's 701-484-2666. Or... Go to tellmeaghoststory.com and leave your story there. Go ahead and leave me a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts. Was something particularly scary in this episode? Or maybe you've had a similar experience. Leave your comments via our Spotify page. Thank you to all the callers who left messages this week. And as always, I'm your host, Michelle Newman, signing off. See you next week. <laughs> Must have been it.